myself Ankita Tiwari from LG Institute of Engineering and Technology from ITIC department. I am going to take a session from the subject that is computer vision. Subject code is 3171614. The module that we are going to cover is module number 6, motion representation. In that we are going to the topic that is affine flow that is with related to optical flow and the differential techniques that we have for the uh, optical flow. So moving forward. First of all, the optical flow we have already discussed in the last lecture. We have already discussed the various equation that we have for the optical flow. So today we are going to represent the constraint equation that we have already learned. That is optical flow constraint equation. The most basic assumption that is made in the optical flow calculations is image brightness constancy. Hence the assumption equation that we have already derived. So this is simply the assumption that from a short interval that is T1 to T2, while an object may change the position, and with respect to T1, you are going to uh, go, go, go for the interval that is uh, T2 with an object that is may change the position, which will be in terms of reflectivity or we can say illumination. That will remain constant. So mathematically, this can be represented as F of the X of plus delta X, Y plus delta Y, and T plus delta D. So here the three respective res uh, parameters are x, y and t. So with respect to x, we will have the initial or we are changing the motion with delta x, same with the delta y, same with the delta t. Now where f, x, f of x, y and t is the intensity of the image at the position x and y and at time t we can say for the delta x, delta y is the change in position and delta t is the change in time. Now, if we apply a Taylor series expansion to the left hand side that we already see here, we will get that as f of, we have left hand side as was x plus delta x, y plus delta y, t plus delta t, which will be defined with the Taylor series f of x, y, t plus df, that is df of dx into delta x plus df of dy into delta y plus df of dt into delta t plus h o t form where the df by dx which is defined okay df by dx is defined df by dy is defined and df by dt are the partial derivatives of the image in, image function in the x y and t dimensions we ignore the higher order terms since we are dealing with a small neighborhood so once we substitute equation 1 in equation 2 that we have we are left with the optical flow constraint equation which is defined as that is delta of i into v plus i of t is equal to 0. Now here, the delta of i will be defined by i x and by the two parameters of x and y. It's a special gradient, we can say that. Also, v is defined by uv, which you can also be defined as delta x, comma delta v. is the optical flow vector and it is the temporal gradient. So since we are dealing with a single time displacement, that is between the two of the things, delta t will remain 1 and thus disappears. So the, the, we can say the three gradients that are easy to calculate using derivative operators. The optical flow vector that is uv is what we are searching for. So this equation tells us that when we apply a flow vector to the special gradient of the image, it will be exactly cancelled by the temporal gradient. Now the differential methods that we have for the optical flow, the first method that we have is Horn and Hump. So one of the classics of the optical flow calculations, Horn and Hung method is global. So calculation of any flow vector can be based on the entire image. Now this, their method uses the optical flow constraint equation but also imposes a smoothness constraint as well. So the rationale is that the optical flow field should vary smoothly and should have few discontinuities. So they therefore we can say add a constraint to minimize the square of the magnitude of the optical flow vector which is defined by the V. By the v which is defined by u and v value. The equation will be defined by e squared c is equal to du by gx whole square plus du by dy whole square plus dv by dx whole square plus dv by dy whole square. So this is what e is defined with respect to uh, function. So where du by dx, du by dy is the change of the u component which is along the two dimension and dv by dx, dv by dy is the change of the v component. This error is the difference of the optical vector compared to its neighbors. So if the vector is significantly different, the gradient of the flow vectors along with the either the x or the y value will be large. So the sum of this error along with the error of the optical flow constraint equation gives us the total error which is to be minimized. 
in terms of x and in terms of y. So that is being defined. Like with remember, suppose the optical flow constraint equation will be zero. When the optical flow vector matches perfectly with the spatial and temporal gradient that we already defined with u and with v parameters. So therefore, the total error to be minimized is e square is equals to integration two times integration of delta i to v plus i t that is uh, whole plus a square into the whole term that we have du by ds whole square plus du by d by whole square plus db by ds whole square plus db by d by whole square into dx dy. But the first term is the optical flow constraint equation we can say and the second is the smooth net constraint which is multiplied by a constraint vector that is a weighing vector by alpha 2. So the differential methods to replicate, so recapitulate, okay, that what we are doing is taking the sum over all the pixels of the error for each of the pixels optical flow vector which is defined. Like suppose the either the error can either be the amount or that the, we can say the vector flows or we can say the deviates from the spatial and the temporal gradient or it can be a lack of smoothness of what the flow vector which already been assumed as u and v over a range of pixels. So if the flow vector is significantly different from its neighbors and then we can say this gradient will be high and the corresponding error will be higher. So with respect to that horn and hung worked out the previous equation that we already seen using a digital estimation of the Laplacian. For the optical flow gradients, you get a large system with large equations for the each of the pixels. That is defined by alpha square plus ix square i bar square into u minus u bar. Okay, u bar is defined with the parameter is equal to minus ix into ix to u bar plus i by v bar plus i t. Same will be applied to ix iv with respect to ev vector. So here we can say u bar and v bar are the averages of that component of the flow vector uv in a small neighborhood around the current pixel that is x and y. And we can say that arises from which the Laplacian operator to find the optical flow gradients. So ix and iy are the spatial gradients and it is the temporal gradient. So alpha is the weighing term from the equation from the error of the optical flow's dissimilarity to its neighbors. So the second differential method that we have is defined by Lucas and Faraday. So one of the most popular method for the optical flow combination is Lucas and Faraday differential technique. This method involves solving for the optical flow vector by assuming that the vector will be similar. That that time that the vector were different, it will be similar to a small neighborhood surrounding the pixel. So it uses a weighted that is least square method to approximate the pole optical flow to pixel x and y. With respect to that, EV is equal to sigma, that is sigma summation of P, which belongs to ohm W square into P delta of I into P dot V plus I T into P. So where delta of I, that is of P and I T of P represent the special gradient and the temporal gradient at the neighboring pixel, that is P. So and what is V? So V is the optical flow vector for pixel X and Y and W of P is the weight we associated with the neighboring pixel. That is W square of P. Now with respect to that, for each pixel we will find an optical flow vector that is consistent with the neighboring spatial and the temporal gradients. So we will considering a surrounding neighbor ohm of size n where each neighbor is represented as pi. Ignoring the weights of all the instant, this equation simply sums the error of uh, applying the flow vector V to the spatial and temporal gradients of all the surrounding neighbors using the optical flow equation. So if this considered flow vector is inconsistent with the spatial and temporal gradients of some neighbors, the error will be higher. So the weights are used to dimension, that is, uh, diminish the importance of the distance neighbor that we have. The farther the neighbor is, the more the associated weight is. Or we can say, oh, from the pixel, the smaller the associated weight is. So in this way, the influence of more distant, that is, pixels is reduced. Now with respect to that, this least squares problem can be solved by, as we have already discussed, A of T, W square AB is equal to A of T, W square B. A and B defined by the parameter that is A is equal to delta of I into P1, P2 till Pn that we have. W is equal to diagonal, that is W of weight of P1, weight of P2 plus weight of Pn, which is into with B, these parameter by minus I of P1, minus I of P2, same till Pn. So A of T W square AB is equal to A of T W square B, which is defined with A, P, W and B, where A is the vector of all the special gradients of all the neighbors, that is N neighbors of the neighborhood that is ohm. W are the weights for each pix, uh, neighbors that we have and B is the vector of the temporal gradients.
Moving forward, motion models that we have, translation, including similarity of fine projection. We have already seen these are what the different forms are. Translation, what is similarity, what is affine, what is perspective. Here we are talking about affine. So full motion model is defined from physics, or we can say elsewhere that is V is equals to ohm into R plus T. So Vx, Vr is Vz is equals to ohm of x or uh, yz plus t. With respect to that a of x is defined by minus the different quadrant that we are taking for a particular a. And these parameters are defined like velocity vector, translation component and angular velocity that we have, particular w. So general motion is defined by x is equal to f of x upon z and y is equal to f upon y upon z. So take the derivatives of all the forms, we will get the, that form that we already shown here with respect to the function. Okay, so here u of x y and v of x y will be defined by one by z of x y a into x y that is t plus v of x y that is o formula that we have put it. In. Here we are just putting the uh, value of x and y with respect to each point. So where z is only here because a of x y z will be removed. It will come to the center. It will merge there. So here the value that is a t is the translation vector and ohm is the rotation. Ohm is defined as a rotation. So a of x y which is defined by minus f 0 x 0 minus y f y and with respect to v n value the whole parameter is defined. Now with respect to that a fine motion is defined by like u and v we already have that is x and y v is x and y a1 is a2 a of x plus a3 of y same thing for v a4 plus a5 of x plus a6 of y because we are continuing with the same uh, value of x and y substituting this in the brightness constants that we have i x of u, i y of v plus i of t is equal to 0. We have already seen this brightness constancy equation. We will, we will be going to place the u and v value here. Nothing else. So, we will get this type of equation. So, each pixel will provide one linear constraint in six elements. So, least squares minimization will give like error of a bar, which is equal to sigma of i of x, same equation, plus i of y, same equation, plus i of t, whole square. So here, again, the sum gradients over entire time, so that we can do it like error, we will just put the square, whole square and putting the value. So minimize the square error of progress, we can will get this type of matrix relating i with a and with the i of square term, i of t term, i1 of t, i2 of t and i till i n of t. This is an example of parametric flow can substitute any linear model easily. So this is what the things are with respect to affine flow and the differential methods that we have for the optical flow. Here we, are, uh, we have completed this topic. Next topic we are going to do in the next session.